All right, big news today. We should probably pop some champagne, but obviously this is all about the Bitcoin ETF being approved by the SEC. And the first time that a crypto asset is legally available on Wall Street. We're going to break it all down for you. You guys are going to love it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. I want to thank our sponsor today, and that is I Trust Capital. If you're looking at going long term in a crypto IRA, one of the best places to do that is over at I Trust. All you have to do is visit their website. It's very simple to get to. And the cool thing here is there's no monthly fees. You can only have a fee when you're actually doing something inside your own account. And of course, you can get to everything from crypto, altcoins, Bitcoin, ETH, and of course, even precious metals. So check it out. Just use our link down below. You get a $100 funding reward. Makes it very easy uh, to jump in. Let's go to the tweets. We've got a tweet store and some clips for you guys today to break this down. There's a very interesting thing brewing around Bitcoin whether or not it's going to hold its current price. And we'll get into all that today for you guys. But if you're brand new to our channel and you just, you know, you've been hearing about this thing, this ETF thing around Bitcoin, what is it? What's going on? Well, the point is, is that the Spot Bitcoin ETF is officially trading now as of today on pretty much all the sources that you might get a stock on today. If you go into your Fidelity app or your Schwab, those kinds of uh, functions, you guys, of course, can get access to this. So it's, that's, that's big news in the sense that now Main Street uh, Finance is having a full access to Bitcoin for the first time. So it's a big deal. Let's go to uh, a clip right here that kind of talks about its first day out. And we're not even done with the first day, but listen in. So to me, GBTC is not a real new ETF. So I'm really looking at the other 10, and they have 1.5 billion. So they've already smashed as a group, the world record, which was held by Bitto at a billion in the first day of trading volume. The world so record for the what? To... ETFs or just crypto ETFs? No, total. Wow. So it's beating like gold 2004 type ETFs? Oh, yeah. Gold's big claim to fame, GLD rather, was it was the fastest ETF to get to 1 billion. It did in three days. I bid is at 713 million already. That's the winner so, so far? That, it's probably a near lock to pass a billion, probably by 2, 2.30 p.m. Once it passes a billion, it's broken the volume record. I give a 80% chance that bid, I bid breaks Bido's record alone. Throwing the group, you have like a doubling of the breaking of the records. All right, so a couple of points that they were talking about there is the fact that we've got this early activity within the first day, breaking pretty much all records for all ETFs ever. And this being, well, really, and rightly so, you know, kind of the alpha dog in the crypto uh, hunt for sure. But you look at rates, and we did a video on this, and this is the, I think, going to be a big issue going forward because we are going to see a lot of people starting to look at rates as a big part of this. But Eric Balshunas was kind of going in here, focusing on Bitcoin as a big takeaway on the ETFs, continue to show they can handle just about anything. Here's a look at the trading profile on ETFs in Europe where spreads and um, preliminary discounts have tightened, expecting the same US uh, in the US over time. And they are showing some comparisons on the spreads, et cetera. Now, what does that mean for Bitcoin overall? I think there's been a lot of unique positions that the SEC has put this market in. Remember, this has been a really over the last 90 days, I would say has been this crazy, crazy pent up demand because everybody's talking about it. So I think it, it's a very interesting position right now. If you look at what happened with the SEC, it gets a little bit political here. Turns out SEC did hold a vote. Here's the breakdown. Gensler approved it. He was actually the tiebreaker. Pierce approved, Ueda approved, and then uh, Crenshaw and Lazarag uh, did not approve. So I think with uh, with this, it, it becomes such a political situation right now. And I don't, I, this is a problem overall. And if you think about just in general, what's been happening, uh, Peirce actually talked a bit about this in the sense that the SEC has really kind of caused all this. So if something does kind of start to go south on this ETF, is it the SEC's you know, lack of being able to get this approved in a normal time frame when they had the ability to do it clearly since they did approve it? These were the two pretty much against the vote uh, overall. Is it something that the SEC could be basically, you know, kind of in hot water again for just further market manipulation just because of this situation? And I think this is what it is going to uh, boil down to in the next few months. If we do see a retracement, 
This is the good thing and a bad thing. Obviously, it'll be a bad thing, and it's going to be making all the news out there. See, I told you so. This is starting to drop. Bitcoin's under 40,000, whatever that number is. But imagine what the opportunity is for the amount of money. Now that there is a vehicle, if we do actually see a retracement on Bitcoin and we get a good position for a purchase. Uh, just to give you a kind of an update, this, of course, was in from Watcher Guru. This was the uh, statements on the spot Bitcoin ETF. While we approve the listing, I'm kind of zoom in on that for you guys. While we approve the listing and trading of certain spot Bitcoin ETP shares today, we did not approve or endorse Bitcoin. So interesting terminology there in the, in the fact that he used the term endorse because the SEC doesn't endorse any investment, no IPO, no ETF, any of that. So interesting statements. I think, again, they're just so concerned about the potential of what the crypto market can do to traditional Wall Street uh, that these are the kind of, I think, measures they're putting in place. Further into, into uh, Twitter, uh, this, of course, was the congressional letters regarding yesterday's hack. This is, of course, everybody very upset with the fact that this was happening with the SEC. If you're not aware, the SEC got hacked. Basically, what was going on most likely was a tweet that was in draft mode that was going to announce it, got somehow got released. And uh, it, so it wasn't fake news. It was just news that was a little bit early than what the SEC actually wanted to uh, do in terms of giving it to the market. But the fact that we've got so many uh, lawmakers now just up in arms about this is ridiculous. This is like a, you know, it's a carnival show of how this should be managed. It should be, none of this should be front and center of every financial news network out there and every influencer news network, every social news network, all of those are all in the same boat. And I think it's starting to shift the minds of a lot of what's happening in Wall Street. Mainly what I'm talking about there is a bit of a divide. And what I mean by that is this right here. Vanguard, world's second largest asset manager behind BlackRock, is now reportedly blocking its customers from buying into BTC's spot ETFs. Part of this, I think, is just them realizing they kind of missed the boat here on this one. Most likely not anticipating that this would get approved. And also, the other thing is maybe not really recognizing what the real interest was in crypto on Wall Street. So that, I think, was a bit of a surprise uh, overall. All right, further into this is uh, a scoop from Eleanor. Uh, again, also Merrill Lynch also in a situation not allowing their customers to access BT BTC spots. Now, one thing that we tested last night and were able to do on Fidelity is that was wide open there. So I, I see that there are certain parts of Wall Street that understand the dynamics around where we're going to start see, seeing these kinds of invest, investments coming from. And I think that's also, there's a bit of a demographic shift there as well. Listen, if you guys aren't following Eleanor Terrett, you should be. She is a Fox business journalist and producer, and uh, she does a great job of breaking down the crypto markets. Uh, she's one of our go-tos for following over there. So give her some love. Tell her PBN sent you and uh, keep up the great work over there. Further into Twitter, here was Caitlin Long, and this was kind of interesting. Uh, so she's surprised a bit. Wow, Bitcoin ETFs created an incredible fissure in the fund management industry. Uh, and I think the, the thing here, especially because she's, she's looking at Vanguard, mainly because she had worked there. But the fact that they are blocking it, I think this is um, an interesting defense of Vanguard from Caitlin Long, who's very pro Bitcoin, uh, obviously. But, I, you know, Wall Street is very interesting because it, it runs in packs. I think most of you guys probably know that. But there are certain banks that are in, certain banks that are heavily competitive. And I think, you know, obviously Vanguard, Vanguard and uh, BlackRock both kind of go at it because they are really one and two in terms of overall. So assets under management is a big deal of being able to get there. And I think this is going to open up, you know, potentially tens of billions in more assets under management over the next few years. So definitely a big one for sure. Let's go into whether or not you should get into an ETF. Does it make sense? how and what you should look at. Listen into this clip right here. How should somebody who's watching this this morning, who may say to themselves, you know what, maybe I want to buy one of these things, so, actually decide? So I think in the long run, you're going to have two or three that actually uh, win. And wow. so all ETFs are not created equal. So what goes into that? It's your execution. It's your liquidity. It's the hidden fees. There's a whole bunch of people who've bought in the last three, four months waiting for this day to come. Do they sell into this? Yeah, Do they listen, hold? Wait? I think today we could literally see 50,000 and 40,000 trade. Right. We're going to see a lot of volatility today. 
um, traditionally, ETFs mark the high, right. the short-term high, right? Look at, look at almost every one of them has come out. Then there's a sell-off, and then there's right. the rally. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's a pretty typical situation. So you have to ask your question, question is, are you late? Um, are we in a position right now, maybe where Bitcoin does truly see a retracement? Because this has been the, the scenario that a lot of people have looked at. We're going to see the pump, uh, a little bit of movement and action. I don't know if that is going to be a you know two-day span, a one-week span, or maybe a three- to five-week span of what this might look like. But Listen to this next clip. It gets into a little bit more around timing. You know, the earliest adapters always get richest. And so in that point, You think it's right. going to 750? You I, can buy listen, it now. It's, it's, her, her lips to God's ears. Uh, I do think over time, this will continue to appreciate. Uh, do I think it's going to 750 in the next year, two or three years? No, I don't. I don't. I hope it doesn't, quite frankly, because if it does, it means the U.S. economy has really fallen into a dire, dire strait. I, all right, so that, of course, is Mike Novogratz kind of talking about what the potential is there for Bitcoin. And remember this, everyone, is that we're dealing with a very hyped up asset right now. Now, Bitcoin deserves that kind of hype. It's kind of led the crypto sphere for quite some time. But at the same time, we are also looking at a market position when you look at the rest of what's happening in crypto and in just in traditional in the S&P whether you look at gold, whether you look at the Dixie, you look at global affairs, and you also look at the macro elements that all play into this. This is always going to be one of those long-term plays. And it's just now available in a different, you know, it's a different flavor because you're able to actually go to Wall Street and participate in this now. Not that you weren't able to do that already with like Fidelity, where you could get direct exposure to Bitcoin, buying true Bitcoin and Ethereum within the Fidelity. So it's been around. We just haven't seen this type of overhyped, you know, situation within the marketplace. Here was Peter Schiff on CNBC talking about declared the launch of uh, 11 spot Bitcoin ETF as a monumental uh, moment for Bitcoin as an investment, but as a non-event when it comes to moving Bitcoin closer to becoming an actual currency. Bitcoin isn't a digital currency. What exactly is an ETF buyers investing in? All right. So that's kind of like asking if gold is a currency. These are not. These are stores of value. At some point, you know, we will see a definition of Bitcoin's utility or not. And it will either be a stored value asset, like what we've seen with gold, silver, et cetera. Sure, those are use case, but for the most part, from an investment standpoint, it is a store of value. And I think that's uh, the thing that gets uh, Peter every time. Uh, further in here, Eric Balshunas, what happened to selling the news? Of course, just showing the activity uh, movement, and it has been uh, continuing to hold somewhat today, but I think we are going to see some volatility going forward here. Brian Armstrong talking about Grayscale, deserving a huge amount of credit for today, pushing this through uh, the courts. And of course, um, that was in reference to getting the SEC to kind of position in a, in a way that they could not deny these ETFs. I'm going to go to another clip real quick. Uh, this is Nova Gratz on how Grayscale plays a role in this. Listen in. Listen, today is going to be chaos, right? Because you've got 13 sales forces trying to pull in money. You've got Grayscale, this giant that lots of people are going to be redeeming from. And so at the end of the day, at 2.30, when you put in your redemptions and your right. creates, there's going to be You just massive. said there's going to be a lot of people redeeming at Grayscale. Why do you say that? Listen, people bought Grayscale at a 30%, 40%, 50% discount to NAV and with Bitcoin far lower. Uh, and so... The chance to now get out at par, uh, they're going to do that. That'll be interesting, too. I think that has yet to happen. But uh, when you look at fees, you look at the opportunity now that's in the marketplace. Could there be a little bit of a watershed event here for Grayscale? I want to go to another clip uh, from CNBC talking with the Grayscale CEO. Listen to what they had to say. Why are your fees higher? 1.5% versus 0.2% for a lot of the I think that you will, you know, Becky, we've talked about fees. We promised investors we'd lower fees. We did. We reduced by 25%. You have countless examples across the ETF space where you have category leaders that are not the lowest cost option. No, but Michael, when you look at the screen, we just put up the fees for everybody across the board. You are significantly, significantly multiples higher than everybody else out there. Why? Yes. Because GBTC has differentiated characteristics. There are not 
there are no assets in these other products. They're starting from zero. And GBTC, again, has that market-leading liquidity. It traded over $650 million notionally yesterday alone. Um, I know, and- but BlackRock is like the biggest of the big. If you're just looking about liquidity and where you have things backed up, like what I, 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 I'm, I'm really curious. Make the case for me why I should pay one and a half percent versus zero to zero point two percent. Well, we certainly did a lot of research around this. The market in the U.S. is just starting today. If you look at other geographies around the world, you have seen products that have fees that carry anywhere from 125 basis points to even 175 basis points, whether that's in Europe, Canada, elsewhere. Um, so there are market precedents for crypto. But, products as well. All right. So you can see Becky, she wasn't really having much of this. I think the, the thing, the fact that he went to, we have, you know, some different tool sets. I think you did in the sense that it was different when it was not available on Wall Street to general investors. I think that's where Grayscale now is just one of the pack. The other thing that they kind of defended was that around the world, there's higher rates. This is the United States. This is the alpha dog in the ETF hunt. It's the alpha dog in the stock exchange. It's the alpha dog in Wall Street. It's really the finance market of the world. For that to be an argument, I think is crazy. I think we're going to continue to see rates be a factor here. And I do think BlackRock is going to win this hands down in terms of total investment. They just have too much access, not to only the money managers, but the amount of assets under management. It just doesn't make sense that this would continue to hold. All right, last up here, uh, just to give you an example, BlackRock putting out charts showing Bitcoin is the best performing asset in the last decade. They are going hands down all the way in on this. So this is going to either end very good for BlackRock in a, or in a position where we start to see some volatility in the market. I think people also need to be ready. If you're, if you're just now, maybe you found this channel today because you were searching Bitcoin ETF. You've never invested in any kind of crypto asset. I want to tell you this right now is that This is a volatile market and you should understand that. So if you're investing for a short-term period of time, you're probably doing it the wrong way anyway. These are long-term plays that will play out over years, if not decades. Uh, So you have to look at that as you start to research any asset like that. So always be thinking about that, not financial advice, but just something to be aware as we deliver hopefully a lot of this news to you guys as things break. We'll get into more stuff here throughout the week. Uh, There is bigger news coming into the Ethereum ecosystem. We'll break that down for you guys soon. Uh, Make sure if you're not following me out there on X, do so. It's just at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.